Bibles, Hebrews chapter 12. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Hebrews. Amen. Who cooks the coffee? Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Chapter 12, verse 11. One year ago, I could not wear this shirt. And I want to say why. Had nothing to do with the big A on the front now. Glory to God. Amen. If you don't know anything about football, then you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow night, do they, Clinton? Amen. Going to be a whoop down on them Yankees is what's going to happen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, we're going to have a, have a good time. What you got there? Oh, bread. We got any, I don't have no guest paper up here. Any, any guests? First time? Amen. After church, after church, meet, meet Susan. Thank you, Susan, for making it, though. Amen. We never know. Hallelujah. I, I knew I knew that this morning that attendance would be light. I've got I've received calls and messages from people. I've had people thinking that I've been sick, been sending me messages, and I've had pastors calling me from around the United States. I said, I'm good. I can I can I can taste, I can smell, everything's good. Amen. Appetite's good. But on the flip side, again I mentioned to you I couldn't wear the shirt last year because I was too big. And uh, you know, it's been a year of exercising and walking. And let me just mention to you, I Hate discipline. Let me know. No, I say it the wrong way. Discipline ain't fun. That's the best way to say it. Can I get an amen? It ain't fun. Tomorrow I will go and, 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 and rehab this body again. I'll work it out again. I, I, don't, I never look forward to it. I mean, I never do. Somebody said, well, I look forward to going in and pumping them. Not me. I pop, I snap, I, I groan, I grunt, amen. I, I, I'm just, I'm sweating, I'm going, well, it, but it's the results. Everybody say results. So as we move into January of each year, we fast. We believe God for fasting. You know, it's a spiritual exercise. And your body will fast. If you get sick, your body will shut down on you. It will start fasting. We're going to talk about that. Are you comfortable? Amen. See, even sometimes coming to church can get us in. And the issue is this. This is the great thing about the human body. God made it in such a way you can change it. If you don't like it, change it. If you don't like it, work on it. If you don't like where you're at, you can do something. Well, Pastor, I'm, I, I, as you do, and you know this, as you get older, it gets harder. Ooh, what's that word? Metabolism? I didn't even know I had a metabolism until I hit 50. And at 50, I realized I had metabolism. We're always picking on David because he's, uh, he's bottomless when it comes to eating. And everybody keeps telling when you turn 40, go, he don't know. We don't know it's going to change or not. But the bottom line is, I can tell you this, Justin, you need to quit smiling. <laughs> guys like you give guys like me a bad time, you know what I'm saying? Amen. I would love to have your grocery bill, man. I, I could afford it at my age, but at my age right now, even though I can afford it, I can't eat it. <laughs> can I get an Amen. When I was young, I wanted to eat it. I couldn't afford it. Now that I'm old enough, I can afford it. I can't eat it. Now I got to eat total. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. No discipline seems pleasant at the time. Thank you for the word of God. Amen. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest. Everybody say harvest. Harvest comes from seeds planted. When you plant seed in the area of discipline, you get harvest. Harvest is a pot. Well, I was, a, as a young man, we planted seed. We, uh, we'd go out, my dad would say, it's planting time. I hated it. You had to get behind the tiller. You had to till the ground. You had to come back with a hoe and lift up little holes. You had to plant the seed in the ground. You had to cover it back up. Then as it began to grow, you had to pull the weeds out from it and go out and weed. I hated it. And honestly, I have never liked okra. But they would plant okra. I found that we were cultivating and planting. I've never been a big bean eater. But they'd plant beans. And I'd have to go out there and cut okra. You don't pick okra. You cut okra. Amen. And you pick beans and do all that. I'd have to go through all of that just to get to the watermelon. Everybody know what I'm talking about? But it was a harvest that would come in every year. My mom and granny would can these harvests. And it was so important for the, for the be able to grow as a family because you couldn't afford food from uh, just, you didn't go to the grocery store. You had to can your food. So that'd be tomatoes and beans and okra and things of that nature. And, you know, and you'd mix that with the commodities that came in. You had a pretty good meal. Amen. So this is the way I was brought up. So when I read the scripture, I realize no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest, a harvest of righteousness, a harvest of right things and peace. Everybody say peace. Your peace is connected to your discipline. 
If you're not disciplined, you don't have peace. Amen. For those who have been trained by it. So discipline has to do with training. So I want to motivate you not only in the area of praying and fasting and giving, but also to realize if you don't like the way you are, you can change it. You know, I saw pictures of James and Annie from years ago, and you guys have done great, man. You're wonderful. Amen. To see folk go through change. And, and there's times in life we do, we kind of just let things go, don't we? Amen. I'm just going to admit to you, the last uh, day and a half, I've ate things I probably shouldn't have knowing the day was coming. <laughs> Amen. And my daughter said, you're going to pay the price. I did. Hallelujah. But discipline ain't fun. It's not fun. And fasting is not fun. If, it, if all this was fun, everybody would be able to do it. But Jesus said there are certain things that only come out through discipline. There are certain things that are only going to take place because you have disciplined yourself. You've worked on it. Now, I've been pastoring since 1993. And since 1993, every January, I have fasted. But this was a, a, one of the first years I remember that I fasted, that I kept it up throughout the year, looking after myself and watching. In other words, when I hit February, I didn't just go. <sighs> I, I, I have hit jack-in-the-box double cheeseburgers February 1st at 12.01 in the, in the morning. Amen. I have done that before, thinking I had to have that. That's not good. Amen. Discipline ain't fun. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the scripture tells us to discipline, amen, it, it literally fasting, you know, uh, as believers, okay, maybe I might, maybe I won't. But as disciples, you've got to have a discipline. That's what makes a disciple, amen, what he is to become a Christian. A disciple is one who follows the disciplines of the mentor. You give, you pray, and fast. Now, you've heard me say this for many years, and if you're new here, here it goes. You got to fast at last. You got to pray to stay. You got to give to live. You got to read to lead. You got to walk to walk. You got to talk to talk. You got to fly real high. And if you can't hack it, then grab your old jacket. Amen. Amen. That means uh, if you can't do this, you know, I'll, I'll see you in February. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, bless the word. Amen. Jesus' name, you may be seated. Fasting. Fasting releases your potential. Who you are, amen, begins to release. But fasting is a part of the faith life. You know, if you have faith in God, you also need to learn how to fast. Amen. In a fast, the believer chooses for a set time to do without something that is hard to do without. Amen. And that could be almost anything. It's not up to me to tell you what to fast. It's up to you to ask God what it is I need, whether it be uh, entertainment, TV, whether it be a food, a drink, a, a drug, amen, to learn how to do without. This is done so that it does not come between the believer and God. It cannot act as a God over that relationship and over the life of the believer. Now, I think it's very important, particularly this year, as we move through this, this political chaos that we've seen, that we fast and that we pray. There are things I cannot change at the White House, but I can sure believe God in the church house. Can I get an amen? Amen. And I can begin to stay in here and not allow any of that to divide us. Amen. But for us to stay strong and connected together. Usually the fast is to do without food. Food. Food is wonderful, isn't it? Amen. It really is. It is so good. I love food. Food is one of the great blessings of God in our lives. Amen. A true pleasure and a true necessity. But humans tend to be gluttons. Let me say it another way. Americans tend to be gluttons. Amen. We tend to, to, to be a little more glutton. We want to eat more. Our hunger can compel us, force our hand, occupy our thoughts. Amen. It may not bother you much in the 830 service, but come out to New Caney at the 1030 service. By 12 o'clock, I got folk looking at me like, preacher, let's shut it down. Amen. Get hungry up in here. Amen. When we have anything in our lives that we don't, or can't say no to, then it is lording over us. So Jesus being Lord, and if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And to make him Lord, we say it all the time, he's my Lord, my Savior, but you've got to make him Lord over things in your life. And you've got to discipline yourself. It's not fun. It's not fun to say no to things, but we've got to get to that place. Amen. If something else is taking up God's place in our lives, it's an idol. And we're living in something akin to idolatry. And I, listen, I don't want Burger King to be an idol. I know you can eat two of them. I know. Amen. I, 
I don't, I don't want anything to become an idol in my life. I, I don't care if it's a football team or a vehicle, amen, or anything else. I want to make sure that Jesus is Lord, amen? Amen. So fasting helps to bring it back into enough control for us to surrender to God so it can be returned to its right place. Food has a right place. You know, one of the things is if you learn to, some people live to eat, others eat to live. And it's thinking about that way. Now, I, and it doesn't mean to eat to live doesn't mean I can't have deer steak. I mean, I can still have that. I can still have good stuff. But, I, but it's not about just living to make sure I get. There are times I will go a day, two days, three days without eating. That's not boastful at all. But that's about my extent of it. I've never been able to go 40 days without food like Jesus. Jesus did not go without water, by the way. He went without food. Your body can go a long time without food. You just don't think it can. But you've got to make sure that medically you can handle it, you can deal with it. But many of us, I'll be honest with you, many of us have used our doctors as an excuse to keep eating and doing whatever we want. If I take this pill right here, I can eat and do whatever I want. On the flip side, you know you can control diabetes with the way you eat. My mother's proven it for years. Amen. You can watch after yourself. You can look after yourself and get stronger. As a matter of fact, this virus, there's a lot of things that you can do to stop this virus from hurting you. Amen. Certain vitamins you take, and I'm not trying to trump anybody's medical bills or anything like that, but I'm telling you, this thing has been a, a, a windfall of finances for the medical world and big pharma. Amen. When we can start taking care of ourselves and refuse to give in to it. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, So when you give to the needy, not if you give, but when you give to them, do not announce it with trumpets as the, tr as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their, full, their reward in full. Evidently, there was a thing that went on in the towns where the men, uh, the, the rich would come out and they would trumpet out loud and they, they would have somebody go forth and, hey, look what I'm doing. And, and Jesus said, you do that, you've already received your reward. Amen. You've got to praise the people. Learn how to be a blessing to others without others knowing about it. Amen. And then he goes on to say in verse 5, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Now let me tell you, this does not... Not, this does not exclude you from praying out loud in public. There's nothing wrong with you praying out loud in public. There's nothing wrong. I, I prayed over a meal uh, Friday night. The waitress was there, and when I was praying, she stopped, bowed her head. When I finished praying, I saw her name. And I said, Lord bless Shelby. Hallelujah. I prayed. She said, Thank you, Jesus. Turned around and walked away. Amen. Don't be afraid to speak out loud. But what he's saying is there are certain people that when they pray, they're going to be real loud and boisterous and, hey, look at me. That's not why we're praying. We want to make sure that we're saying, hey, look at him. And when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces. To show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. When I fast, oftentimes I keep a toothpick around. If you're in my truck, I got toothpicks all over the place. And two things I keep around me all the time. Glasses. They six or eight pair up here. Every, each church has them. My truck's full of them. Car full. I keep my glass. And toothpicks. I always got toothpick around. So you don't know if I've ate or not. So I keep a toothpick in, so folks don't, they don't even have to ask me if I've ate. They look at me and say, well, you must have already ate. Y'all follow where I'm going here? Amen. So he said, you don't, you won't, don't, you don't want to go around and disfigure your face. Tell everybody you fasted. Now, here's the thing. In corporate fasting, I don't mind you knowing I'm fasting. I don't mind you knowing I'm fasting. I want you to know that I'm fast. Matter of fact, me fasting and you fasting helps us. When our staff gets together, it'll be a month or 21 days. We'll talk more about this in a minute. But, but of, of, of probably more soup, salad. Or let me just tell you what I don't do. Fried food, bread, sweets. That would be something. Uh, sodas, amen, fall in that category. Start wiping that stuff out. And so if the whole staff knows that and we fast together, amen, we're not making each other stumble. But if Ramirez walks in with a Snickers bar, there's going to be a fight in the middle of that office. Amen. So it's important. Verse 17 says, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So this discipline comes with a reward, like giving and praying. In fact, it comes with a reward. Something good is going to come out of what I do here. The Hebrew word for fasting means to cover your mouth, which tells me there are times you can fast cursing. Now, Pastor, you're just going a little too far. You know I, 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 that just slips out. When somebody says to me, they ain't got no filter, they lying. Everybody got a filter. 
Quit telling me, you. well, you know, old, old sister over there, she ain't got a filter. She just say whatever she think. Amen. That's her problem. That's why she ain't got no friends. Amen. She said, if I said everything I thought, if you said everything you thought, amen, you got a filter. Fast your language. Watch your language. Learn how to say the word of God more. Amen. Well, you know, and when you fast, not just curse, but how about gossip? How about criticism? How about negativity? This is the most negative start of a year that I can remember this year. We have so many things to be negative about. I'm looking for the positive. Amen. Hallelujah. I said the other day, 2019, we were telling folks stay away from negative people. 2020, we are telling everybody stay away from positive people. <laughs> amen. I want to be a positive person. Can I get an amen? Amen. The Greek word for fasting simply means to abstain, to not do that. The Jews were commanded by God to fast. This illustrated their submission to His will. So fasting takes discipline. Discipline ain't fun. Self-control ain't fun. But you can do it. There are two types of fasting in the Word of God. A full fast is what Jesus did for 40 days. Amen. 40 days, no food. He had water, but no food. It's an extended period. Literally means an extended period without food. A partial fast, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, they had vegetable and water instead of the royal uh, food that everybody else was eating. And remember, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were exiles. They were taken. They were kidnapped. They were made into eunuchs, which means their reproductive organs were cut off. It's a sad story. So you'd think to yourself, well, if I've been neutered, I'm going to eat anything I want, do whatever I want. It's the only choice I have in life. Amen. But instead, Daniel said, no, let me tell you something, King. If you'll do this, Daniel chapter 1, verse 12, please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat. In other words, this is our Hebrew upbringing. This is what we did back in our homeland. This is something that we would do. We would abstain at times in order to give God glory and make sure that he was still Lord of our lives. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. When I say royal food, I'm talking about fats and sweets and things of that nature. They took 10 days, and 10 days is not as long as you think. It feels like it because fasting is the slowest thing you will ever do. Amen. It's just like it, it just ticks by. But the bottom line is, in their fasting, they got healthier. Now, li listen. Some of you say, Pastor, I have problems. I got skin problems. If you, when you fast, your skin clears up because you're not eating the sweets and the, and the oils and the grease anymore. Amen. You're not hitting the fried food. So now my face is clearing up. Well, I've got this, I've got uh, psoriasis and this. A lot of things that I have found out that is wrong with my body is because of sugars. Amen. And if I quit eating those sugars, then all of a sudden my body clears up. Now, it doesn't mean I like it. It ain't fun. It ain't no fun. But on the bottom line, it yields a result and a harvest. Amen. So as I'm going to get ready, to, when I finish this message, amen, today, my fast will begin. And I will begin to put into practice prayerfully what I've been preaching here. But I read what Daniel did. He said, not only me, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All of us look good now after 10 days. So we've proven it to you. Why do we fast? Psalm 69, 10, I humbled myself with fasting. Behind many of you setting sin, behind the ills and effects of fellowship that, that clog the channels of a believer's service, oftentimes in our own life, the clash of personalities and temperament, strife and division, lies that insidious pride of the human heart. Pride and a too full stomach are first cousins. Amen. You get arrogant when you think you're all that, that you can eat whatever you want, do whatever you want. Amen. There's an arrogance there. So humility comes with, I cry more when I'm fasting. I get sensitive, man. I mean, it's like the estrogen kicks in. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Girls, you know what I'm talking about out there? I just start crying. And my wife looks at me and says, Pastor, why are you crying? I don't know why I'm crying. I'm just crying. Sure, I'm just crying. Let me tell you something. That ain't never happened. <laughs> but I am more sensitive. Amen. I, I find myself crying. Boy, I do, I do get to a place where I, I feel for it. Listen. If you, do, if you got a full stomach all the time, you don't care about people that ain't. And you realize that, uh, that two-thirds of our world, there's hunger. 
Amen. There are people that are struggling out there. That, that don't, and all of a sudden, now you start to relate to them. You know, I, I've used this before because a lot of times we forget. We think when we think of Sodom and Gomorrah, the, the sin of that area was homosexuality, that God destroyed them. because That was one of their major sins. But what was the big thing that brought them into that? Go to the scripture next here. Amen. Ezekiel 16. Now, uh, now, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. So the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't just homosexuality. The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was they were overfed. They were arrogant and unconcerned. That, you know, the two worst problems that we have as American believers is we don't know and we don't care. Amen. When you don't know and you don't care, you got a problem. Amen. And many times being overfed. And so this is where the discipline kicks in. Amen. It begins to work on you. God, I don't want to be overfed. I don't want to have that tendency. So fasting then is a divine corrective to the pride of the human heart. It is a discipline of the body with a tendency to humble the soul. Amen. We fast to be heard on high. I want God to hear me. Ezra. In chapter 8, verse, we'll start in verse 21. It says, there by the Ahavi Canal, Ezra said, I proclaim to fast. I told everybody, we're going to fast. So that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask Him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from enemies on the road. Because we had told the king that the hand of God is on everyone who looks to him, but his great anger is against those who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. There are times that we look toward uh, the worldly systems, and, and we, we've been telling them that God does this and God does that, but we don't fast and pray to move the hand of God to protect us. Amen. So I'm praying and fasting, amen, for God to protect us and look over and to give us direction. And that was the thing with Ezra. We need direction. So we're going to pray and fast. We're going to clear our minds. Amen. The mind's been cloudy. We're going to clear it. So fasting is designed to put wings on our prayers. Fasting is designed to drive back oppressing powers of darkness and loosens the captives. It will give a child of God the edge over the enemy. Fasting with prayer says, I mean business. I mean business. Amen. I'm not just praying, good Lord, good meat, good Jesus, let's eat. Amen. I mean business this time. I'm praying. I'm believing. My family needs help. My children need help. My church needs help. Hallelujah. So I'm going to fast. And it, it doesn't look like, it seems like it takes a long time. Let me tell you, I, I work out for an hour. It's the longest hour of my week. And I do it several times a week. Amen. And when I do it, Joseph, it's, it's like, I, here's what I do. I catch myself doing this. And then I had to quit just looking at it. I just got to quit looking at the clock. Amen. And just let it take care of itself. I'm going to get through this. You know, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. I remind myself, my sister at 57 years old was in a wheelchair. She's my motivation. Amen. When she passed away in that wheelchair, I remind myself, my sister wasn't able to do this because of her muscular dystrophy. I'm, I can do this. I can keep pressing. As long as I can do it, I'm going to keep pressing in and doing this thing. Amen. And it's not about trying to be a hero to anyone other than to get myself in a little better shape that I can stay around here a little bit longer for my grandkids. Amen. I'll, sometimes my kids act like they don't need me no more, so I just keep going to the grandkids. That's really not true either. Fasting often brings pressure for the breakthrough to come in warfare a situation that calls for people of violence matthew 11 12 says the violent take it by force and even though fasting seems slow to you i promise you it'll bring a breakthrough in jonah chapter 3 verse 5 the ninevites believed god they declared a fast and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth and i really don't know what sackcloth is but evidently it's just a cloth that goes over you when you throw dust and, and ashes all over yourself verse 10 says when god saw what they had did what they did and how they turned from their evil ways didn't just fast but they turned from the evil ways he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened and if you if you don't remember Nineveh was a uh was the, is the capital of a country called assyria assyria was very wicked toward all the the hebrew people and when they would go in and attack the Hebrews, the Jewish people, they would decapitate the men and stack their heads in the form of a pyramid in the gate of the city to prove they'd been there. They were wicked people. And, and when you know people to be wicked, whether it's it, you have a, something against them. I can mention certain places in America, uh, in the world right now, and you'd have an angst against them because they have not treat, treat, treated Americans properly.
and you'd be mad about it. Well, that's how Jonah felt. And so when Jonah the prophet gets a word from God to go to Nineveh, he don't want to go. He, he's made up his mind, I'm not going. Amen. I hate them people. I hate them Iraqis. I hate them Iranians. I hate them Chinese. I hate them. You see, we're the same way. So I ain't going. God, wipe them all out. I don't care. And God says, no, 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 no. I got flexible laws. I got flexible laws. In other words, you, you, can't, you can't just pin me down on this thing. When dealing when it comes to people that I love, I have flexible laws. Sin will be always visited with judgment, but repentance with mercy. And if they, have, if they repent, I will give mercy on them. So Jonah, you know what he did? He, he gets an opportunity, he goes the opposite direction on a ship. God causes a great storm to come up. Amen. He's sleeping. The Bible says he's sleeping in the bow of the boat. He's sleeping, just like Tay wants to do right now. Amen. He's sleeping. Hallelujah. And, and so they go down and they, and they got to wake him up. They, they roll some type of dice, realize it's, it's, it's Jonah. Knock on his door, wake him up. Jonah said, what's going on? And they said, Jonah, your ship is sinking. Do you have any idea why? And then he has to confess. Oh, my goodness. I'm a prophet of the Jehovah God. And he told me to go somewhere, and I refused to do it. When God tells you to do so, obedience is a powerful thing. Amen. And so they said, well, we got to lighten the load. This ship's going to go down. We're seasoned sailors. And they start throwing things over. And Jonah said, unless you throw me over, this ship ain't going to stop. I'm telling you, the storm won't quit. It's, it's amazing revelation again and understanding. So they decided, you know, let's throw him over. When it comes to you or me, you're out. So they throw his butt into the water. He hits the water. The storm gets calm. And then out of nowhere, boom, 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 boom. Big fish comes up and swallows Jonah. Do you know what Jonah's fixing to do for the next three days? Fast. For the next 72 hours, Jonah is going to be fasting and praying. He's in the belly of a well. Now, he's, you, you read the story. You've got to read it for yourself to understand it. It took him three days before he decided that he would give in. Just like you. I ain't fasting. I ain't praying. I ain't giving. I, I, I love Jesus. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. So God puts you in a fix to fix you. He gets him inside the well. Jonah gets another revelation. I'm coming out of this well, either in the front or the back. I think I'll start praying. So he prays, and you can read his prayer. Amen, it's written down in the book of Jonah. And as he prays, the whale belches him up on the shore. He don't know where he's going, but he happens to land right there where God wanted him to go to the first place. So though trying to run away from God, he just made it more difficult. He lands up on shore, and the scripture says he has seaweed wrapped around him. He, his, his, his clothes have to be acid washed from being in the belly of the whale. He's walking on the shore. He walks by the people from Nineveh, and he looks at them, and this is what he says. In 40 days, God's going to kill every one of y'all. Praise the Lord. <laughs> read it. Read it. He never, ever says repent. He never told the people of Nineveh to repent. I've heard preachers say it, but I can't find it. He never said it to him. He instead, he looks at him and says, 40 days, God's going to kill every one of you. Glory to Jesus. I added the last part. Amen. And then he goes and sits down, and the Scripture says to people. And here's what had to happen. The people had to look at him and first believe that this guy was sent from God. He's, he's been in a well. He he's, he's stinks. Amen. He's, he's de deplorable. And yet he's telling us in 40 days God's going to kill us all. So he said, you know what? We're going to make the, all the animals fast, all the people fast. And God heard them. And, you know, and Jonah got mad about it. I know I'm going on here, but he gets mad about it. He goes and he crawls up under a tree. And he begins to look down and wait on God to kill him. And God didn't do it. And he started pouting. And some of us are that way about our enemies. God, why didn't you take them out? You had a chance. But you know they could have got to Pelosi. I read y'all stuff. 
But no, they couldn't get there. And boy, then you get all mad, a little upset, and this, that, and the other. And so here, 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 here this thing goes down. And he's sitting under that tree, and God sends a worm. A worm. God can send anything to talk to you. A worm. Up a tree, bites the tree, kills the tree, the tree withers. And evidently, uh, he had very little hair or no hat or something, but it burned his head. And Jonah got mad at God again. And Jonah said, God said, look, I can either let the tree live or let it die. I can destroy Nineveh or let it live. That's who I am. But they repented. I'm going to let them live. Learn the lesson. Amen. God loves people. God set the terms. Jeremiah 18, 7. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, tore down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, and I will relent and not inflict it on it the, the disaster I had planned. Let's read it again. And if the United States that I warned repents of evil, then I will relent and not inflict on the United States the disaster I had planned. Why can't we replace our name with that? We have to, listen guys, I, I promise you God's looking to the church house right now. He's looking to the people of God. Will we repent? Will we turn? Amen. When God defers an evil day, it could mean the salvation of multitudes. So fast. It's, it's going to take discipline. It's not fun, but it's a good thing. Isaiah 58, if you want to read a great chapter, I'll close with this. If you want to read a great chapter on, on fasting, Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? This is why I want it. This is why I'm asking you to fast, to break the yoke. He says in Isaiah 58, Your fasting has turned to fighting. Beware when you're fasting, I mean literally real fasting, and you're put aside some things you used to always lean on, your attitude can get a little rough. You've got to beware of that. You get a little snappy, a little snippy, amen. That's when your preacher going to tell you eat a Snickers. Because you ain't you when you're doing that kind of stuff. Amen. I'd rather you eat a Snickers and break a fast than hurt somebody's feelings by while you're fasting. Amen. So be wise in this area. Amen. Many a believer has been saved without being delivered. You know, we saved, love God, but we, we still need to be delivered. What happens? Fasting helps to break that. Amen. There are believers bound by fear, resentment, jealousy, uncleanness, knowing full well that their lives are in full contradiction to the liberating gospel of Christ. Amen. So fasting gives us an authority and a pressure for the breakthrough. What are some true results of fasting? Look at it with me. First, Amen. To loose the bonds of wickedness. Amen. To loose the bonds. To break those. Second, amen. To undo the heavy burdens. Three, to feed the hungry. Amen. When, it, we, when I'm fasting, you know what I realize? I got food to spare. I can be a blessing to other people with my food. Hallelujah. I can do something. I can feed the hungry. Amen. And shelter the poor and clothe the naked. These are results of fasting. To look after people. Isaiah 58, verse 8 says, Then your light will break forth, your healing will quickly appear, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Amen. In other words, God's got you back. God said, I will look after you. Your light will, you, you start getting more light. Healing. Everybody say healing. Imagine, imagine the physical, the mental, and the spiritual healing that can come through fasting. Amen. To believe God for certain things in your life through fa that, that, that while you were fasting, you started getting well. Even things started turning out. I know it's no fun. Discipline is no fun. Man, when I was a kid playing football, practice would go on. It, it, we had this hill back behind New Bethel Junior High. And that coach would line 40 of us players at the top of that hill, and he'd throw that football to the bottom of the hill. The first guy to get that ball could go in. And he would do that, and everybody would run back up the hill. And I remember my t I was the slowest guy on the football team, man. And he'd throw that to football. And I'd run down that hill. Sometimes I'd just fall and just roll to the bottom. Because I knew I couldn't get to the football. He mean, I can't get there. He mean, I tried to trip guys. But I know it's going to be a fight between me and the last dude out there to get the football. And there are times the coach would just have mercy on me and just drop the football right in my Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Amen. I could go. It was never fun. You'd be sweating. You'd be, you know, the, the discipline part of it wasn't any good. But you get in the fourth quarter of that game. That's when it paid off. Because now you, you have more win than anyone else because you ran up and down that hill 40 times every practice. 
Amen. You were able to make it over and over because you disciplined yourself. No discipline for the moment seems to be joyous, but with it, it yields a harvest of righteousness and peace. Amen. And that's what he's saying here. Your light's going to break forth. When I fast, I don't know why. God forgive us. Why we wait till January? Well, we ought to be doing this year round. You know about it. You've been with me long enough. Amen. You know about this. Hallelujah. So how do we do it, Pastor? Build up to it. Please don't start this afternoon and look over at your spouse or, or friends or family or mom or dad and say, you know what? I'm going to go at it. 21 days ain't eating until the end of 21. Don't do that. Build up to it. How about just first take a meal off? How about fast five to five? Well, you just, just take 24 hours. It's not that hard. Start fasting. Amen. This evening after five. And go to after five tomorrow. See what I'm saying? We passed that. That means I'll be sleeping some while I'm fasting. Yeah, I know. It's called a loophole. What I'm, what I'm telling you to do is, is it, you know, that's actually, uh, some religions do that. But, but on the flip side, I'm asking you to start out small. Amen. Don't, don't jump. Build up to this thing. You know, I, I started last year walking. I mentioned this, and I couldn't walk. Uh, 200 yards without wearing out legs hurting now now I, I, I walk everywhere I just walk amen it's just I feel like Forrest Gump I just take off walking amen it's, uh, but, but I had to build up to it you got to build up to things get along with God and his word like I said last night I started reading the book of Job and I was so amazed by the things I was finding in it amen get along with God and his word limit outside voices as much as possible some of us have to, we have to fast uh, social media because it's driving you crazy. It's messing you up. Well, I'm going to go to parlor, duck, duck, go, or this one here, and that one over there. And next thing you know, I can't even find you. Amen. You know, I hate what they, I honestly, I hate what they've done to the president. It's censorship. There's no other way to look at that, censorship. But on the flip side, i got to let the press deal with that. Amen. i got to deal with me, but I'm just telling you. There are things that you can fast. There, it doesn't mean you have to stay up. Maybe just for a day. A day off. I have to be on at times on, on Facebook and Instagram for people to see what's going on, what's happening, because a lot of us get our information that way. But on the flip side, you don't have to be on that 24-7. Hey, man, you go out to eat and lay everybody's phone. Stack them up. First one touches his phone, pays the meal. Mm, just a thought. Make it a spiritual journey, not a wrestling match. Make it a journey. Journal it. I know some of you like to journal, write things down. Make it a journal. Amen. Make it a journey, not a wrestling match. What, what are you doing? You know what I did? I went back to January last year, and I looked at my calendar. And I'm looking at my calendar this year. Do you know, actually, they're both about the same when it comes to funerals, weddings, and life. It's just our focus has only been on a virus. Our focus stays right there on that. And it keeps folk terrified. Amen. You got to live. You got to realize this. God has set boundaries to your life. You're not going to exceed it. Well, I've been working out. I've been working out. I'm going to exceed it. No, you're not. You're just going to die healthy. Come on, give me an amen. I don't know why everybody don't die healthy. Why you always got to die something? Amen. The spirit of our fast is to humble ourselves before God, to call upon Him for His divine will. From our heart, we desire to diminish influence of the flesh, the flesh of our lives. In the front of this building, H, would you hand me one of those, please? In the front of this building is, we have oil. Amen. And they're in little capsules. And actually, it's a, it's a fragrant oil that we order. But I want you today to pick up one of these on your way out of the building. You come forward and get one, or get one on your way out. There's a, a bucket back there, Clanton, on, on the thing. Pick up one for yourself. I'm not going to pass these out. I'm going to, you're going to have to make up your own mind. Sometimes it's best for you to take it yourself. Amen. Then anoint yourself. Get out to your car, wherever you can. I want you to put a little oil on your head. Pastor, how does that work? I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. I do not know how Pepto-Bismol works. I don't know how aspirin works. I don't know how a lot of things work. All I know is it works. I put oil on me. I know it myself with oil. I put it on my joints that hurt. 
I anoint myself with oil. Amen. If I can't find this, I'll get some WD-40 or Crisco. I'm going to find something. Amen. Anoint myself with oil. Amen. And ask God to help me through this fast. Amen. And listen, you say, well, I'm asking God to take the hunger pains away. That ain't going to happen. You're going to be hungry. You need to feel hunger. You need to feel hunger. You need to know that they that hunger and thirst after God will be filled. You need to have a spiritual hunger. Amen. Inside of you. So this helps feel that in your life. So I would love for us to quote this and say this together. Amen. What I'd call a declaration. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Mike. Amen. Let's say this together. God, you created everything. Therefore, I belong to you. I submit to your claim on my life. Your care for me is supreme. Your plans for me are great. I am partnering with you in your kingdom. My salvation is sure and my future is bright. Amen. This is our declaration today. Father, I thank you for an opportunity to set aside some time for the next 21 days in fast. Lord, to believe you for a personal sanctity, for self-control, to be heard on high, to change your mind about things. I still love America, God. I know you love America. She's been a benevolent nation. We turn from our evil. We ask you to help us and give us the ability to stand strong this year. Amen. And to free the captives in Jesus' name. And everyone say, amen, amen, amen. If you need to tie the offering envelope, it's there in front of you. We'll be taking it up in the back and in the front if you want to put it in the bucket here. I'd like for everybody to get one of these, though. Put it in your pocket. Amen. Keep it with you. And I, I like the little, the little one. The big ones, the big ones spill everywhere. My, my wife and daughter, they, they're so big into oils. There's oil all around my house. There's oil sitting on hot plates, Joseph, that permeate and smell through the house. I got a man cave that my dog hangs out in. It's got a little dog odor in it because a dog hangs out in it. Hello. If you got dogs, you got dog odor. So they come in there and they put hot plates in my man cave and oils. I walked in there this morning. They had one sitting over there by Coda's bed. And it was all over the wall, all that oil. And that hot plate was turned upside down on his bed. And it caused a burnt ring right there. And I thought to myself, had I not got up and gone to church this morning, my dog could have burned up my house. Amen. Be careful how you deal with the oil. I probably shouldn't have shared this. All I know is when I get home, somebody got to clean that oil off that wall. Because it's all over my poor dog. He smells good now. <laughs> you probably feel like you've been tarred and feathered with hot oil. <laughs> hey, I love you, church. I love you, church. I love you, man. You're a great church. All the things that you do and things that you've done. Hey, Amen. This year, please, I, I know I've been seeing folk. It is, I, I, I'm actually seeing this quite a bit. Pray for my so-and-so. They just got tested positive. Then people ask them how they're doing. Well, they have no symptoms, but pray for them. A lot of folk have no symptoms, but a lot of folk do. It says it's the weirdness of this thing. I've got friends whose spouse has it. They stay in with the spouse, and they never, the other person never got it. This is the weirdest year we've gone through and starting off again. Amen. So stay wise. Be kind. Amen. Listen to people. Some folk, it, just, it helps them to know that you're hearing them. Pray for them. Amen. David, if you come on up. <laughs> yeah January 10th um, we, they are going to have swap today after service see Linda and Ken for any details anything you guys want to say come hang out eat some food drink some coffee whatever whatever you're doing I don't know fasting out. I don't know what y'all doing maybe they having salads in the back who knows <laughs> January 12th two or more And uh, speaking of that listen don't shame somebody because they not doing the fast that you doing, okay? That's one of the things I've seen in church for a long time is, oh, well, I'm fasting this. And then somebody says, oh, well, I'm fasting this. Oh, well, 
that's nothing. Like, well, maybe it was something to them. Like, <laughs> you let them work that out with God, okay? So, somebody somebody doesn't pass Snickers and they're eating Snickers. Just <laughs> enjoy. Uh, January 12th, two or more uh, prayer group. That will be on Tuesday. Join us on uh, Tuesday night, CH, uh, in the back uh, for details. H, anything you want to say? Right, right, and that, that's mostly concerning the first midweek service. So, like, on the first midweek at 7 o'clock, they will start prayer in here. What happened last week is we were trying to run people that wanted to talk out while they were trying to pray. And so what he's saying is if you want to come early on Tuesday night to go to midweek, if you don't want to pray, just stay in the back, chit-chat, hang out, fellowship will be open, fellowship will all be open. But uh, if you want to pray, come on in. And, and uh, It was actually really good. It actually worked out really well this week. Um, January 17th, Lift Ladies Bible Study. Um, it's the third Sunday each month. See Miss D- Diane Phelan for details. Anything you want to say? Okay. Come on. Oh, wow. So each month is a new leader. Okay, sweet. That's cool. That's great. One way to uh, learn is to teach. When when you start teaching, it's amazing how much you learn just trying to teach. Come on. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I uh, <laughs> said uh, Miss Annie will be teaching the, the class this week, this month. This month, she's got, Miss Annie will be teaching the class this month, and they're learning on the uh, women of the Bible. So each each month, there will be a new teacher, is what they, she said. So everybody gets the opportunity to teach and to receive. Well, Lord, I just thank you for today. Uh, today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Man, I miss Sam right there. Sam, I hope you're watching me. I miss you right there because you're always trying to throw me off saying other stuff down there. (laughs) You almost threw me off not having nothing to think about. Lord, I just pray that you would bless everybody in this house. Lord, as they give today, I just pray that you would just overflow their lives And Lord, more than that, as they begin to fast this year, I pray that whatever they're fasting and believing for, that Lord, they would see and you would exceed. I just thank you for what you're doing in this house. I pray that you continue to bless every single person and give them guidance through this year. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.